more meeting of the Homewood Planning Commission. Mr. Goodwin, if we could please start with a roll call. All right. Mr. Henniger. Here. Ms. Wilcott. Here. Mr. Harwell. Here. Mr. Respento. Mr. Armstead. Mr. Broadhead. Here. Ms. Andress. Here. Mr. Goulas. Here. And Mr. Roberts. Here. Thank you. Um, next item is approval of the September minutes. I took a look at them. They looked um, good to me, as always. Uh, if uh, Motion to approve. There we go. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Okay, the meeting's pa uh, the, sorry, the minutes pass. Um, communications, uh, Mr. Armstead's not here today. Um, I will, as chairman, uh, just kind of in anticipation of uh, some of the uh, discussion in the public session of our cases today, uh, we go ahead and just tell everyone here, We first of all, we appreciate you being here. Uh, we appreciate uh, hearing everything you have to say. We've received, at least on the, on the cases we have today, uh, 17 emails. Uh, and I think a, a petition with 90 different property owners. So we, we, we've heard uh, from, from you guys. Uh, that, that doesn't mean, obviously, that we don't want to hear from you today. We do want to hear from you today. Uh, we would like, uh, however, to be mindful of everyone's time. If you could try to keep your comments to about three minutes, we, we would appreciate that. I'm sorry, my microphone's creating problems. Uh, and also, to the extent you can avoid making redundant comments, uh, we, you know, we, we do understand the issues. They're all um, set out in writing numerous times. So uh, we do have a pretty good grip, but we do want to hear from you. So um, the other other part of the cases I'm about to call, uh, there are two related cases. We're just going to call them, have them heard all at once, and then we'll vote on them separately. So, all right, with that said, um, new business. We're going to uh, call up uh, cases RZ2410-01 and RZ RS24 dash 10 uh, dash 02 relating to t uh, 1920 and 1932 Huntington Road. The applicant is uh, Burke Cox with PPP trustees. Uh, Mr. Cox, if you want to come forward and, and present your case. Cox, you want to come up and present to be more familiar with all the issues? Certainly, certainly. Uh, it, it, absolutely. And then just as another reminder, uh, everyone who comes up to speak, if you would write your name, and, and uh, you can certainly come up now, write your name. Uh, on the on the uh, pad on the podium, your name and your address, and then also state it for the record, please. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Todd Smith. I am with Gonzales Strength and Associates. We are the uh, civil engineer and surveyor on this project for Mr. Cox, and I'm representing him today. Uh, we are here just requesting. Go ahead and do both items at, at the same time. Okay. Yeah, that makes so, sense if you so, just address both. So we are requesting rezoning and resubdivision of the two parcels or the two properties located at 1920 and 1932 Huntingdon Road. Uh, they are currently a total of five individual lots and two individual parcels. Uh, the, the larger parcel is comprised of four of those individual lots and it includes the existing building and uh, that is being used as a medical office building and the parking lot for that building and the uh, the fifth lot and the second parcel is uh, the portion of lot 18 which is currently a mixed gravel and asphalt parking area uh, that's being used right now uh, we had originally had a meeting with city staff back in June to discuss the possibility of some improvements on uh, lots 17 and 18 for just basically taking the, the, the portion of those two lots that are currently gravel, paving those and just putting in some defined parking spaces. And at that meeting, we were made aware of the fact that uh, two things, lots 17 and 18 were currently illegal subdivisions because in, I believe, 1991, when the uh, Alabama Outdoors lot there on the northwest corner purchased the property with the parking lot behind them, uh, it left a portion of lot 17 and a portion of lot 18 as just two 
basically flag lots without any frontage on a public right of way other than the public alleys that may be on the north and east side. And we're also made aware that the portion of lot 18 is actually still zoned R5 residential zoning. It wasn't zoned to match the rest of the property. Um, the rest of the property was zoned MXD-C, which was a mixed use district with conditions. And in our conversations with city staff, we felt like rezoning everything to C2 to match the neighboring commercial properties would be more appropriate than leaving it as a mixed use zone. And also I would like to, to make everyone aware that we had a couple of rezoning conditions that we were proffering with this request. Uh, one of those conditions was that if the property ever were to be redeveloped in the future, the uh, car wash and gasoline service station uses would not be allowed. Those are two uses that are allowed under the C2 zoning. And uh, it was kind of discussed with city staff that those would not be uses that would be conducive to the neighboring area. So uh, Mr. Cox was, was fine with making that a condition of zoning that it, it couldn't be used for those two. And also the other conditions were just that the existing building could continue to be used as it is today. Uh, in the C2 zoning, there is a 15 foot rear setback from the center line of the public alley. I think that building as it sits today is about between seven and a half to 10 feet off of that center line. So they're just asking that they don't have to go out and cut off five feet of their building when that gets rezoned and that the uh, maximum square footage for office use in C2 zoning is currently 5,000 square feet, and that building is about 5,050 square feet. So again, just that, that condition that they're asking for is that they can continue to use that existing building. Obviously, if they were to tear it down and rebuild, they would you know, <coughs> rebuild it to the uh, setbacks and the, the size requirements of the C2 zoning. And as far as the subdivision case goes, I think I kind of already covered that. We're just taking the five different lots and combining them into one single lot on a new record map. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you. All right. So this is a public hearing. We're going to open up the public portion of, of this case. Uh, again, just as a reminder, if you come forward, if you would write down your name on the pad. Also state your name and address, write your name and address, state your name and address for the record. Um, and again, to, to the extent you can, avoid being duplicative. And if we could try to keep it to three minutes, I appreciate that. With with all that being said, uh, if, uh, if anyone wants to come forward and speak on this case, this is your opportunity. Lancaster Road. I believe my wife was the one who sent the email of all the signed petitions to you this uh, yesterday. And uh, we are still getting some more, I think, other emails that trickled in. But uh, we oppose, basically, I'm going to keep it plain and simple, we don't want a, the possibility of a future shopping center behind our neighborhood. And C2 will allow that. Uh, as far as paving a parking lot, we respect them wanting to do that. If there's another means of doing so, have at it. We, uh, we just don't want a future shopping center. This comes on the heels of the new Piggly Wiggly getting built behind there. And we kind of see that there's, there's apparently an end game here and we just, we are, we are opposed to that. Thanks.
Uh, my name's Dan Acock, uh, 1820 Lancaster Road. So my comments are, um, I'm in residential, but normally, and correct me if I'm wrong, but why are we rezoning or requesting rezoning anyway? <clears throat> like, don't you normally, if you're looking to rezone something, you have a, here's our plan that we wanna do, and here's why we need it to be rezoned because of the plan that we're trying to do. This seems like there's, we want to rezone for something in the future that may be good for the neighborhood, may not be good for the neighborhood. People may vote for, they may not vote for, but we don't know what it is. So I think it's a little to come in and say, we bought this property, maybe that was true, and we didn't know that all this was zoned different. Maybe, okay. But here we are in 2024, whenever this property was purchased in 2020, whatever the email said. I don't quite understand why it's getting taken up to just randomly rezone to a C2 when you've got mixed use now and an R5 that we know can't anything be done probably with that R5 with current setbacks. That's the first thing. What's the plan? And then maybe this is a good idea, maybe it isn't. The second part is I can't believe we're going to vote or look at changing setbacks when we don't know. I know it changes because the building, they don't want to have to cut five feet or whatever it is off the building, but we're changing zoning and again, or setbacks, proffering a setback when we don't know what's going to, like, we don't know what's going to be there. Maybe it's demoed, maybe it's not. So I think this, this thing is, to me, way premature for this. So I hope you'll take everybody's consideration and turn this down, at least until we have more information. Thank you. Jonathan Daniel, 3021 Firefighter Lane. Uh, we live just across the alley from the from the um, property in, in discussion here. I just want to kind of raise one point um, as it relates to kind of the commentary in the in the email. We it's currently being referred to as a perfunctory realignment of the property. And if you go to Oxford Dictionary. Perfunctory is carried out, is defined as carried out without real interest, feeling, or effort. Um, it's from a Latin word, done with, um, in a careless manner. So I certainly don't want this to be done in a perfunctory manner, and I appreciate that maybe the term was, you know, ill-used, but wanted to lead with that. Um, <clears throat> when my wife and I had uh, breakfast at or lunch at Johnny's one, one day when we were currently living in Helena. We stopped at the stop sign there, um, right where um, firefighter um, kind of kind of tees off there. And uh, we saw a for sale sign. And it was rough. I mean, I, I don't know if, how, how many of you kind of remember kind of what the area looked like at that point in time, but, but it, it did not look like very much. And we knew that property prices there were, were were quite high but my wife looked at that she was like that is going to be a really really good property so we we thought about it we prayed about it um we we called the um the real estate agent talked to them about it we went out there and we sat we listened to the traffic that that came by we listened to the birds we turned our we turned our our app on that kind of talks you know it tells you all the birds that that you can hear and it was just a really, really great, really great place. 
And we knew it was going to take some development. We knew it was going to take some money. But, you know, location, proximity to everything is, is, is really great. Well, there's a concept in kind of nuisance law where you move to a nuisance, right? Like if, if, if there's a trash dumpster over there and you, you buy a house and that, that trash dumpster was there when you, when you bought the property, well, you, you move to the nuisance, right? Well, in this case, if we're allowing something to be rezoned that we don't quite know, like, what's the outcome going to be, right? Like, we're hearing that, hey, it, this is perfunctory, right? They like, just simply to um, repave a lot, which, I mean, my car can attest that the lot needs to be repaved. Like, I mean, we've, we've driven through there. It's, it's a rough lot. So it seems to me that there could be a reasonable solution to pave the lot in some way that everybody can be comfortable with if that's if that's the plan without you know, going through a significant rezoning and um, understand that there's you know proffers and those sorts of things going back to 2008 that uh, you know those that came before us right and those that kind of lived and, and tried to establish that you know before some of us moved in we certainly need to respect and appreciate the the work and the effort and the thought that they put into that so anyway appreciate your time appreciate you hearing me out and um Y'all have a good rest of your evening. Okay, uh, Marcus Sparks, uh, 1809 Lancaster Road. Um, just uh, wanted to echo my neighbor's comments, especially Dan's comments regarding uh, leave the zoning as is unless and until there's an actual retail development project presented for consideration. Um, we're really concerned about ongoing development in the area. Um, we're gonna have more traffic as it is with the, the development of a much larger grocery store in the pig. So. Um, Big, big concern for us. Thank you for uh, taking our concerns into account. Appreciate it. Hi, my name is Sandy Nolan. I, uh, along with my daughter, we own the house at 1836 Lancaster Road, the backyard to which is directly across from this property. Um, I just wanna, wanna say a few things. When my daughter moved here to start school, I reached out to a realtor, and it was a woman my age, and I said, hey, kind of knew her through some other people. My daughter's coming to Birmingham. My other daughter would be coming the next year, and I need to make sure she's safe. So where would you recommend we live? I'd heard of Homewood. I'd heard of Mountain Brook. And the first year she lived at the Hill, my husband was ecstatic because her apartment balcony looked down on the police department. He was thrilled. After that year, we then started looking for a home because my other daughter graduated and was moving and once again, I asked my realtor, I said, um, we love Homewood, still the property prices are high, any other place we could go. Her comment to me was, Homewood is where families are grown and families are made. And so we helped our daughters buy this house because of that. We knew that we could move to Vestavia, we could move to Hoover, which is where my husband and I lived for 10 years when he was in school here. But we loved Homewood. We loved the family feel of it. My daughter, when she was at the Hill, would walk, and she would always call and say, I miss home because I smell people, or I, I smell burgers being grilled and see kids outside. And, and that is what Homewood is known. And I live in Huntsville. Anyone that asked me in Huntsville, my neighbor in Huntsville recently said, my daughter's starting med school, where should she live? I said, Homewood. 
that is what is known all around North Alabama and in Birmingham as Homewood is where you go to grow a family. In Huntsville, um, we own our own business. We've developed property, so I respect you, Mr. Cox, for doing what you're doing. But I just, I think there is a place for that, and I think there is not a place for that. Um, we obviously have concerns because it is in our backyard, and we don't want the traffic. We already have a lot of traffic going up and down Lancaster. A lot of times there's speed signs there. So we have concerns about the traffic. We have concerns about the noise. We have concerns about what retail is going in. Um, and will one thing lead to another? And what's, what, what is that really going to be? So my only comment would be, as I was always taught growing up, put the shoe on the other foot. If this were your backyard, what would you want? And that's, that's really, I think, the basis of decency. If it were your yard and your street, what would you want to do? And that's all I'd like to say. I appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate uh, you you appreciating how sorry I'm Burt Cox I'm Burt Cox. I'm not public. That's fine. I was just trying to since she re, since she addressed me I was just going to say. My name is Allison Palaszewski, and I live at 1840 Lancaster Road. And my house is directly behind the doctor's office. Um, I'm a longtime resident of Homewood. I grew up in Homewood, born and raised. Um, very proud to be from Homewood. Um, but why change it now? Like, I don't see any reason to change it now. My husband and I, we've um, strongly oppose this rezoning of this um, this lot. Um, I get, like Michael said, I get the repaving of the um, parking lot. Sure, go ahead. Um, but there's no reason to change this zoning, especially with, um, let's see what's going to happen with the pig and what it's going to do to our neighborhood. Um, I think there is going to be a lot of effects to when this... Um, all the construction and the pig is built, what that's gonna to bring to our neighborhood and we don't need to add to that. We have lots of children that walk to school in the mornings and there is a lot of traffic already. The, um, the way that people cut through our neighborhood now is only going to get worse. It really is only going to get worse. Um, let's see. Um, we don't want it to turn into um, the, ch the risk of it even asked to be changed again and what is happening in West Homewood. Um, like I said, I grew up, that's where I grew up on that side of town in West Homewood. And to see what is, has been built now is, it's insane to me that we allowed that size of a property to be built in such a quaint, awesome city. Um, <clears throat> You don't change it just to change it. There is reasoning behind it. We strongly believe that there is reasoning behind it. Um, you just don't come up and say, I want to change it. Um, I think that's all that I want to say for now, but thank you for taking the time to listen to us, and I hope you really do um, consider what the people that live in this area have to say. Thank you.
Good evening, I'm Jamie Harris. I represent two of the owners of Alabama Outdoors. I want to reiterate what's already been said and offer a, a bit of a different perspective uh, from that of the retailer that abuts this property. I'd like to give you a safety reason, a commercial reason, and a practical reason to disallow this application. The safety reason, which I think should come first, is traffic. A, D, a C2 zoning will permit a restaurant, it'll permit additional traffic, a burden on the cross streets. This is across the highway from a school. Those children come and go that way. We don't need more traffic in an already busy area. Second, the commercial reason. What comes with traffic is parking. A restaurant will have parking at all hours, family hours, business hours, there'll be competition for parking. It's gonna be a problem for my client trying to do business in the holiday season among other times. That's the time they're primarily busy is the holiday season when people are out Christmas shopping, grabbing things for the holidays. Parking's gonna be a concern in addition to the traffic concern and as a result of it. The practical problem is, has been expressed here several different ways and that's the open-ended nature of the rezoning. Current use doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be rezoned for its current use. So what is the use going to be? Uh, there have been some offers for conditions, but the one I haven't heard is a restaurant. That's likely to, I'm no expert, but it's likely to be the most profitable we can guarantee. It's the most likely to bring traffic, which is a safety problem, and more parking problems, which is the commercial problem. I'll also throw this out. I hate to be a lawyer telling engineers about numbers, but the setback's 20 feet, not 15 feet, I think as I heard it. I may have mistook that. But this property doesn't fit the character, excuse me, the development of this property currently doesn't fit the character of C2. C2 contemplates what Alabama Outdoors is. It fronts on the highway with parking behind just as the other retailers have there for my entire lifetime on fronting onto Highway 31. This doesn't fit that. And what C2 here is being attempted to grab this R5 piece, which is townhome type housing, is to create more parking for the existing structure, which doesn't meet the current setback requirements. Again, hence, where can we see this going? We see this going restaurant. I mentioned while we're talking about numbers too, what's the height that's permitted in C2? I don't know your zoning code chapter and verse, but when I looked at it before I came, it looks like 35 feet. Now, does all that parking in a 35 foot structure that doesn't meet the setbacks, I think you'll be able to look straight across over to Lancaster from 30 feet up in the air. But that would be a permitted use on this as, a, as I read your zoning code. So for those reasons, forgive me if I, try, if I went over three, mi three minutes, I'm a lawyer, uh, <laughs> sometimes we talk. But I thought those were points from another perspective that might benefit uh, the commission. Thank you all. Susan Kennedy, <laughs> yeah. good to see you. <laughs> I'm Susan Kennedy, and I live at 1896 Huntington Road. I bought my town home in 1989, and I told my children, I'm coming out of here in a box, <laughs> and I mean it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I can't count the number of times at my mailbox I've almost been hit by a car for somebody running the stop sign, flying down Huntington Road from Highway 31. Uh, the doctor's office does not bother me in the least, but what it may bring bothers me. I was born in Birmingham, moved away for 25 years when I was 20 years old. I came home 35 years since I've lived here. My grandfather built my house 
on the mine drive. It's still there at 316 Divine Drive. Homewood is in my heart. I love it. I chose no other place to live but here. And I don't want to see commercial properties encroaching on years old neighborhoods. And I'm old now. I'm 78 years old. And I want to live out my life in peace in my townhome and a fear of what may come when we don't even know what may come with this rezoning. I am firmly against it. And I hope you all will back us up. Please. <laughs> Thank you. And work hard for us, okay? <laughs> Okay, thanks for hearing me out. Good, e good evening. Um, my name is Todd Vickers. I live at 1835 Lancaster Road. And I don't really be preparing any notes, but I was going to kind of speak from the heart. Um, <clears throat> we're really just kind of reiterating everything that everyone has said. Um, I have an eight-year-old daughter that I walk to school, or my wife walks her to school with her friends every morning, and we have to cross 31 where there's no speed zone to slow cars down, nor is there a police officer. That's a, kind of a different subject. But when you add in this development, it's really going to make things where we're, not, we're probably not going to be able to walk into school anymore. And it's kind of taken away from, like someone said earlier, this is a family neighborhood. And what my, my neighbor's mom said a minute ago, why if, why if this was your home? Why if this was your backyard? Thank you. Mr. Vickers, be sure and sign that. It's, I don't really have a lot to say. I moved to Homewood in 1976. I grew up here. Um, I bought uh, Huntington from Corey Flowers, not Corey Flowers, Corey Hartman, who's over on Skin Wellness on 31. Uh, we've ad advocated for safety on Huntington. We talked to the city a couple years ago and suggested that the city make Huntington one way going out to 31. I was I worked in Highland Park. I was driving down 31 this morning. And there's a three-car T-bone crash right there at Huntington Road, right next to Alabama Outdoors. This is the first I've heard about wanting to develop a shopping center or a restaurant. Um, I went to the city. You know, Kale knows when I came originally to try to put uh, Blake Raggio in there. We put him in there. He's got a five-year lease. He's got a five-year extension on his lease. We just wanted to pave the parking lot. Found out that that one lot, 18, was a residential lot and we can't pave a residential lot. And so we said, well, we gotta rezone that lot. When we had talked about putting Blake Raggio in there, we talked to Kale and they, they said, this being mixed use is just kind of an outlier because all the mixed use stuff is over in Soho. And so we said, well, just why don't we just zone it to what is already there? I, I'm not involved with the Pagliano family or anything over in Piggly Wiggly. I don't have anything to do with that. Um, I understand the, the neighbor's concerns about traffic and putting a big building there. I, I understand that they may doubt that, that that's what I'm doing. 
I'm comfortable with leaving an MXD. I mean, we just need to, that one residential thing needs to become residential. I don't know that, I do know MXD is what all the Soho is. And so I think with MXD, you can do pretty much anything that's in Soho, which would be restaurants and stuff like that. But I don't have any, I don't have any interest in that. I was trying to let Homewood kind of clean up some of their zoning concerns that they've been wanting to do. I just wanted to pay the parking lot. And I, I think there's a, you talk about health and safety. I think there is a safety concern about the fact that we got this lot that's in disrepair that I'm not legally allowed to fix because it's residential. I, so. I just want to confirm MXDC. It's different than MXD. So that's. But the, but the C is just, the, con, the, the MXDC, I think, is just a condition of. Um, no, the, the just office. office. Yeah, exactly. Office no space. residential. Huh? No that's, residential. That's right, yeah. So. But I'm not changing, so I don't, I'm not worried about MXD. I'm just saying, I, I just want to pave the parking lot. At some point, it's, it's, it's a gravel lot, and I can't pave it because it's, it's, a, it's a zombie residential lot that got cut off when Alabama Outdoors um, bought the two residential lots that go out to Huntington and cut it in half. I think that's what happened. It, the records aren't entirely clear, but I don't have any interest with the, the other stuff. I don't know what's going on. I understand if I lived there, I would be concerned about it too, and I'd I don't begrudge them getting, I tried to put something up and I, on the website and tried to offer up anybody want to talk to me and I'm happy to talk to anybody about it, but ultimately we're just trying to do what we said we were trying to do from the beginning. Thank you. I'm afraid I have a question. I guess I would love to know the answer to that one question. If you can, if you can pave it as it currently zoned, is that a possibility, or well, is that something he's prevented from it, doing? It goes to the fact that the whole question is resurveying that lot into the larger lot. One is zoned R5. You just said, I thought I understood you to say, that you were comfortable with the, the current zoning. Would you be willing to request a rezoning of that R5 to the current yeah, MXD MXDC, MXDC C, yeah, sure. and then have it resurveyed. So uh, the only reason that we changed that was because when we had talked to the city prior, they were like, all of our MXDs over here in Soho, and this is kind of an outlier. And so we said, okay, well, make it what it, when we were talking to the city, the city I said, well, make it, I don't care. I just wanted to pay with a lot. So we can keep it MXD. I, MXDC. MXDC. I, I mean, I'm that's a big even, difference. You guys say MXDC. Yeah. MXDC. Yeah. To maintain that current MX. I just don't think there's a lot of conditions, but I'm happy with that. I, I'm not changing anything, so I really don't. I, I, I'm not trying to be, um, you know, nefarious. I, I, the reason the reason I use the word perfunctory is that all I want to do is pave the lot, and so I was like, okay, if you guys want me to rezone it, I'll rezone it. That's because that's what y'all asked me to do, and I said, well, we can rezone it to C2. I never came to you to ask to rezone any of this stuff. So I still want to understand why he can't reason. Why can't he just prepave it? You can't pave a residential. It's a because it's a house. You can't make a commercial parking lot out of a residential lot. That's what they told me. I'm not arguing. I'm just that's, to me. Yeah, that's that's seems, that seems like a really simple thing to do. Just you got a parking yeah, lot. That's, that's what I thought. To put paving on, but I want to try to understand <laughs> if that's. That's not the So so he can't legally now. He can't pro he can't turn R five into a parking lot if it's yeah. more. But it's already a parking lot. Isn't it? Yeah. That's right. I mean, parking I that's can't be the primary it's use of a residential lot. But it's already parking. being used as a parking lot. It's paved currently, right? Am I missing something? Well, well, it's partially. That's and that's what happened. It's not an actual. It doesn't meet the standards mm -hmm. of a parking lot. It doesn't even though it's being even though it's being used. Yeah, as it's a not parking legitimate. Lot. Just, well, I mean, you can park on the gravel pit. I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm just trying to say that's. So that's the right. And if right. you were to choose to rezone this parcel to MXC, it would also have to be attached to a development. In other words, in this case, right. And I don't have a development plan. I just wanted to repave the parking lot. And so, the development plan could be just a, basically a survey based off the existing conditions. No, it couldn't. I had to, they said I had to provide a development plan. I said, well, I'm happy. Right. To see. Well, I don't you care. Have, you have a building there. Plan, 
in this case, could be the survey. I mean, with, with improvements to make the parking that's mm -hmm. there today match that's city it. parking requirements. Right. That's it. Which are that's all you have already. to do. No, we don't have any. There's no lines. It's basically an abandoned lot, and we just wanted to pave it and put lines on it so that you'd have a parking lot for the people that are there, for my tenants that are there. So I'm not trying to push C2. I don't really. It's not. I never went to the city to ask to get its own C2. I said. I submit, I tried to, I got Gonzalez to come and do a survey and said, we've got to do a parking lot. And the city said, you can't, that's R5. And quite frankly, they didn't even know I owned it. When we bought Independence, it was attached, well, I said, Fred, I said attached to Independence. I meant it was part of the deed of yeah, Independence. Of and somehow that slipped through the deed process. So that was the second issue is that we're just trying to mm -hmm. make sure it's registered right. So, so let me clarify, MXDC, if he, uh, which you, You've already asked for C2, so that's not going to happen tonight. But if moving forward you you did ask for MXDC, that requires a development plan for approval. You are willing to do that? I don't know what the development plan would be. I mean, if you want me to submit the plans for a parking lot, I'm happy to do that. That's what that that's all you have to do. The existing, Basically, yeah, it's just a site plan so which which yeah. you're yeah. saying is not going to change anything you're saying the building's going to stay the same the only thing you're doing is paving the parking lot if you came back to ask for mxdc you would submit a development plan which we would and then every time that property is changed any change you make to that property you have to go back through this process to have your development plan approved and that way the neighborhood knows what your plans are every time moving forward that's what we're asking if you're willing to do yeah i mean I, i'm willing to do, i'm not happy in just in the terms of the time and cost associated. So it is a big burden on us. It's not like we're printing cash, renting the building to Blake or Agio. Um, and so it is a burden that we just keep on, you know, Kale, you remember when we tried to get Blake in there, just how much challenge it was for things that were just, what I would, what I labeled as perfunctory, just I mean, it just seems like something that shouldn't matter. I, a doctor moved out, I was trying to move a doctor in, I spent weeks and weeks and trying to get that done, as you remember, and it was frustrating. So yes, I'm willing to, but it, I did pay these guys ten thousand dollars to to go through this process. Rezoning is a is a long process. It's not something. It's a long right. process for a reason. But to to Mr. Harwell's point, I didn't know I was going to rezone. I was just trying to pave what was already a, a part. It's people park there every day. Twenty cars are parked there every day. I was just trying to pave it. I wasn't trying to rezone it. So I understand. And now you're saying every time. If I want to put, I don't look. I don't know. That, that's that, what I. What, the reason it's I asked. I don't want to argue with. I'm not trying to. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not trying to argue with. It's fine. It's just a little frustrating. Okay, I understand. The reason why the MXDC and then you would do a development plan every time is to communicate to the neighborhood that you understand that this what they're all sitting here saying tonight is we don't know what you want to do. We don't know what you want to do. I mean, I, I asked the staff earlier today. Can you list all the C2 uses? And it's this long. Have and you seen the MXDC usage? MXDC, you, this, you, again, with a development plan, you have to have that approved every time you do any changes. So that you go through this process every time. So that gives an a, a, that sure. gives it's, it's a fine. process. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an objection to it. I'm, I'm not an objection to it. It's fine. Yeah. If you want to make an MXDC, it's fine. I, I was trying to do it because the city asked me. They said they wanted the same zoning as everything else. If you look at the big city zoning map, all I, I've seen, I know in, in Soho, and this is this one thing. It's fine with me. I really don't care. That's not true at, at all. Um, MXDC, the C is attached to Dr. Raggio's lot because there's a condition that only a, only a metal office, office building, office, office, office. only an office can exist there. Th that's why when you say MXD versus MXDC. No, that's, that's not. The C is that there can't be an office there, as I recall. No, the C that there is an office there. That's not true. Only See, is the, is remember we went through this last time, Kayla, and we said that it, you can't have a medical office in MXDC, and then we originally found out that the C was that the city council back then made a change to where we could have a medical office. No, it, it says that you only need one office at a time. Yeah, that's right. Because the office that you're talking about is the one that's pushing back in. I remember. Um, then 
I don't, I'm not an objection to it being, a, I, I've got a 10 year lease for it to be a medical office. I just want to pay the parking lot. I mean, I don't have any objection. I have nothing to do with Piggly Wiggly or anything else. I don't want to put a shopping mall. As I said, I grew up in Homewood too. I like Homewood. I'm not trying to change it. I just want to pay the parking lot. And I was told that, first I was told I didn't own the lot. And then I was told that I had to get a resurvey, which I did. And then they said, well, you got to get it rezoned, which I said, okay, fine. I didn't know that there was people signing well, petitions to stop me from doing things. Right? It's it's fine. I, didn't, I don't know when I have to. I got to go through a new process. So I got to go through a new process to MX. So I'll do a new process. I'll submit. I'll submit a plan to pay the parking lot, and I'll do that. It's fine. I'm 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 willing to take that. It's fine. And I told you I didn't know exactly when I was going to do it. I just wanted to pay for the lot. I, but I'll do that. I'll do a schedule well, too. The schedule that was submitted was sometime between 2025 and 2027, which seems a bit of a stretch. No, no that, that wasn't part of the a development. What happened was at the last minute, y'all said what they what I was told was I did not have to do a development plan if I changed it to C2. That's one of the reasons that we went to C2 is because you said you don't have to do a development plan for C2. And then I said, okay. And then for the very last minute, you said, no, you have to have a development plan, even though I understand that there's, my understanding is you don't have to, have, I think that as I read. Site plan, site plan, yeah, site plan, not. Site plan is less rigorous than a plan. Right. And so they said, well, where are you going to do it? I said, so I said 2025 to 2027. 2025 is in three months. Right. And so I. I'm happy. I'm happy. To, I'm happy to acquiesce to whatever we need to get at the parking lot. So that's my position. And my point is that what our options are as a, as a commission right now is either we can vote on the application. Or I would now. table it and then we can take it up at another date yeah, when we're. We would, have, we, we, we would have to request withdraw and yeah. submit a new application. Does anybody have any more questions for me? I'm going to go watch so the The question is, is that, is that what you're planning to draw? It sounds like that's what I have to do. What is my choice? Yeah, is that withdraw the? Well, you, yeah, you, you, you can, you can go forward and request the planning commission to take action on your requested zoning. They will make a recommendation to the city council. City council will consider that C two request. That's one option. You can request that you would like to withdraw. You you may request to withdraw this rezoning case. Come back with another requested rezone into the MXD. We'll, we'll do that. We'll request withdrawing, and this is why we're, we put 2025 to 2027 because I knew it was going to take a long time. Yeah. That's fine. We'll request it. We'll go MXDC, which I understand that I have to do a planning thing. That's all fine. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, well, how do you want to handle the resurvey? Uh, well, let's well, go away. Yeah, you want that to go away as well? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it can't be resurveyed no, because no, it doesn't. No, again, it was going to be subject to, but we can uh, we can revisit that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, right. So, resubmitted as a can we get a request then to withdraw both cases? Is yeah. that acceptable? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay.